Today's webinar is catered to those who are looking to pursue their master's degree outside of India and uh, we are here to highlight the benefits of studying abroad both to your career and personal life and uh, most importantly how you can achieve your goal of doing your graduate studies in a foreign country. So we will be talking about mastering your graduate studies and before we start I wanted to introduce myself and my two colleagues joining me here today. Uh, my name is Mitty. I am a senior education advisor here at School Apply and I specialize in assisting students in finding the perfect fit to universities specifically in Canada. I share a similar profile with uh, a lot of you today. Um, I studied in an Indian curriculum myself and I moved to Canada to pursue my undergraduate studies. And uh, I lived there for several years after graduation and I have been successful in achieving my dreams of studying abroad and uh, I am positive that you can be successful too. Shata? Hi everybody. Um, my name is Akshata and I'm a senior education advisor here at School Apply. I have been an international student for a large part of my life and can definitely relate to the range of emotions I'm sure all of you are feeling at this moment. Um, I grew up in East Africa, Kenya and I studied in the UK. I did my undergraduate degree at Cardiff and, and my master's at King's College in London. Um, I had been living in London for about 10 years before I moved to Dubai, so my expertise lies in placing students in the UK. Um, with our breadth of knowledge in this field, you are definitely in the right place to learn more about pursuing your master's degree abroad. My name is Azura. I'm half Canadian, half Irish, and I grew up traveling around the world with my parents on a boat. I did all my post-secondary studies abroad in France, Canada, and China. I'm passionate about education and travel, and my position as senior education advisor at School Apply combines both of these interests. So I am one of the United States specialists, which means that I assist students wanting to study in the U.S. with finding and applying to the right university for them. Thank you, Akshata and Azura. Um, now moving forward, a quote by Benjamin Franklin, uh, which says, an investment in knowledge pays the best interest. Uh, I wanted to share it with you because it is very relevant to our webinar today. Uh, we are all here today with a specific mindset behind why you want to do your master's. Normally, it is to build your resume and move ahead in your career and earn more money. And uh, uh, I want to explore that mindset of yours uh, so that we can see what value a master's program could add to your profile and what opportunities lie both inside and outside the classroom that will help you take advantage of your resources available to you as a, a postgraduate student. And uh, this will help you reach from point A to point B. There are several tools that you can use uh, and that universities provide to their students um, and one of the most important of these is a career clinic. Uh, so a career clinic is an in-house assistance center at, at a university and uh, they are designed to ensure that students are sharpening their professional skills. Uh, for instance, a career center can help you write the perfect resume. Uh, they can teach you how to be successful at interviews by conducting mock interviews that allows you to rehearse your responses and deliver the right responses at your actual interview. They even teach you what to wear to an interview and uh, in other words, that's uh, how to dress to impress on your big day. Universities typically host uh, career fairs as well, uh, which will help you connect to your future employers. Um, and uh, industry leaders attend that same uh, career fair too. And this is your chance to secure a full-time job even before you graduate. Some of the big companies that feature in these career fairs are big names like Deloitte, KPMG, Google, Ernst & Young, to name a few. Now, uh, in addition to all of this, there are also several graduate programs that have internship opportunities that allow you to gain valuable work experience in a field related to your studies. Uh, this is an excellent tool to use so you can get a direct insight into your life after your master's. 
one of our partners, uh, Canadian University of Dubai, offers internship to their students. And as a result, 60% of the students secure a full-time job before their graduation. So we just discussed the opportunities you will have outside of a classroom, uh, but uh, you shouldn't overlook what is offered in course as well. During your graduate studies, you will be communicating with your classmates and professors and uh, through various coursework such as essays, presentations, and uh, group projects, you are essentially improving skills. Um, skills such as how to do a presentation and how to be a team leader for certain assignments. That might seem trivial, but these are highly transferable skills and it will help you in the long term when you are at your workplace. Now, um, when choosing a university, it is important to think beyond just ranking. You should think about several factors such as the possibility of staying back in the country you studied at. Think about how important this factor is to you and what are your realistic chances of grabbing this opportunity. There are several countries, such as Canada and Ireland, that allow students to remain in the country, and it's a great way to gain international work experience after you have graduated. By this time, you would have already gone a step ahead and uh, earned an international graduate degree, but uh, now you can go a step further and gain some international work experience. In fact, postgraduate work opportunities can even lead to immigration to that country and permanently moving there. Um, so I'd like to talk about a few benefits of a master's degree abroad in relation to forming and being part of a network. Um, firstly, being part of an international master's program, you gain access to the extensive alumni network of that particular program and of others um, in professionals with key positions to whom you already know, already have a direct link through the education you possess. Uh, your connections will get, give you a great overview of the business world and a deep understanding of the slightest changes in the business environment. You can reflect on some big business issues, make connections between various global events and world affairs. As you can see in the picture, that's Dame Vivian Westwood, um, an alumni of King's College London. The most obvious benefit is a list of contacts if you ever need a job or are looking to hire good people. For example, many of the people on my master's program were able to help each other out with getting job offers and even references. On my master's program, we had a member from the royal family from Brunei and a senior government official from Kazakhstan. The next thing to consider when you pursue a master's degree is the background and experience of the instructors. One of the things I really liked about my program is that they followed a practitioner-based approach, which meant all the teachers were still working in the field and only taught part-time. Some of them were entrepreneurs and owned their own companies. Um, one was a CEO of a major company that delivered huge government contracts in the UK. The head of the course was also the editor of the Financial Times in the UK. This real world experience they shared with us was extremely helpful, but even if your instructors are no longer actively involved in your industry, they're still likely full of tricks if the trade. Your teachers probably enjoy helping develop upcoming professionals, otherwise they wouldn't be there teaching in the first place. Uh, they're perfectly suited to help mentor you and give you guidance in your industry, and having access to experienced professionals like that can give you a definite advantage over your peers at work. Um, and finally, there are some great networking opportunities available when you're regularly in close contact with 10 to 20 professionals in your field. The relationships you form during the course of your classes can yield benefits for years down the road. These would be known as your industry connections. As a master's student, you have great networking opportunities. You get to know and uh, get to know and interact in a context that accentuates your business management capabilities with colleagues and professors and teaching staff, usually former or current potent business people with great management experience. So 
So once in a lifetime opportunity. So for me personally, my study abroad experience were the best years of my life. I did my MBA in Canada and had the most, the most fun I've ever had. The key points to this experience that really stand out in my memories today were the flexible curriculum, the really interesting classes, the part-time jobs I was able to get, the great friends, and a really large number of social activities, as well as the opportunity of doing a semester abroad in China. So many graduate studies actually offer rotations, which means that you will be able to do several semesters in several countries, or a one exchange program, which means you would go to one country for one semester. So actually, studying abroad doesn't mean you'll only get to see one country, you might actually get to see several. When I look back on these years today and all these wonderful memories, I feel like taking the decision to study abroad was definitely the best I've made so far. So traveling abroad, specifically at this stage in your life, is a great way to prepare for your future, for your career, your marriage, and really the rest of your life. So as Mitty and Akshata explained, having an experience abroad is beneficial to your career in a multitude of ways. So while this is by far the most important factor because it will enhance your job prospects and guarantee a better life for you and your family, it's not all that you will gain from this experience. Being abroad opens your eyes to the unknown. So it's completely different to holiday because when you're living in a country, you actually pick up local knowledge, you learn about the country's opinions, their values, and you definitely improve your social skills. So if you're planning on emigrating, doing a graduate degree in the country of your choice is a, the best way to adapt to the culture and have a more attractive profile for employment. So being immersed in a brand new country is a fascinating experience from a cultural perspective. So what I mean by this is that it really opens your perspective on different ways of doing things. You get to discover different outlooks on work, on life. It opens your mind to new ways on teaching and learning, unique customs and traditions and social activities you may didn't even know existed before. So about 20% of students are international in uh, universities abroad, which means that you get to mix with locals, but you also get to meet a large number of students from all over the world, which is really makes it a very diverse experience. Taking in a new culture requires you to adapt and to be understanding of differences and welcome change. While this may seem difficult at the beginning, facing this will help you develop social and adapting skills, which are very sought after by businesses these days. So there are two main reasons why these skills are really important. Uh, first of all, with globalism, big companies are international and they do business with the rest of the world. So this means that when they're hiring, they search for employees who are open-minded, who can adapt and understand other cultures because they know that you're going to be working with people from all over the world, so you'll definitely need those skills. And secondly, the fast-changing environment that companies are dealing with today really obliges them to look for employees that suggest that welcome and accept changes rapidly. So to give you an example, at School Apply, at the company here, there are 32 employees from 18 countries. And this diversity is really very enriching on a day-to-day -day basis because everyone has a different perspective and adds to um, the, the job and everyday experience. So from my experience in job interviews, employers value international experience, whether it was for studies or work, almost more than the actual degree that you might have obtained. Uh, secondly, so by leaping into the unknown, you quickly learn a lot about yourself and about being independent, about handling unforeseen situations, and all of this will help you figure out your strengths and weaknesses. So during this life-changing experience, you'll learn to step back and see your own culture through a different lens. So what I mean by this is that it enables you to develop your own opinion rather than simply accepting the ones you might have grown up with and maybe never questioned. So this is also the best way to improve your English, which as we all know is a key skill in today's working world. Studying abroad may also mean living alone for the first time. So in my case, this had a huge impact on me as I had to learn to do all my paperwork, organize my insurance, my bank, my tax returns, as well as just cooking and caring for myself as an independent individual. So you quickly gain confidence and strengths, and although it may seem daunting at the beginning, once you're faced with the situation, you develop resources that you never even knew you had. So to sum up this life enrichment section, I would say that going abroad is great for personal development. Overall, you'll come out of it as a stronger, more mature person with an open mind and improved adapting and social skills.
Uh, to wrap up this section, the factors that we just discussed are what we call a return on investment. Um, so it's not really the name of the university you go to or the ranking of the university, but it's what you do with the opportunities that are available to you. For instance, the chance to network is available to everyone, but it is not mandatory. So it's important for you to go out there and make yourself available. This will have a long-term benefit, which will help you in boosting your salary. Overall, the experience of living and studying abroad uh, is outside of your comfort zone, and it adds to your overall personality and life development. So go beyond thinking about what being a degree holder could do for you, but think more along the lines of what you can do for yourself while you are a graduate student to get the best return on investment. So moving forward, we will be talking about the practical steps of studying abroad. We're going to be discussing about three points now. One is how to select the right university. The second would be the various documents that would be required for your application. And lastly, entry requirements for a master's program in US, UK, Canada. I also want to mention that we will be answering some questions um, during the end of the webinar. So feel free to ask your questions in the question section of uh, the webinar or the chat and uh, we will pick out a few questions to uh, field. Okay, so firstly, um, the, you would look at the academic uh, criteria to, when you're picking a university. Um, in general, master's programs are self-contained courses of study with at least some substantial independent research component. They are typically offered as second cycle qualifications taking place after undergraduate first cycle and preparing students for more advanced third cycle work. Uh, so you should be asking yourself, does your undergraduate degree match the requirements for the master's program you're applying to? For example, in the US and Canada, a law degree and a medical degree are both postgraduate degrees. An MBA at most universities will require you to have at least two years of previous work experience. Um, if you have already chosen a career or even if you already have a job, your current or future bosses may require the knowledge of specific disciplines. University is the best place to learn another language or acquire advanced computer skills. It is advisable to choose a master's that, la that adds to the list of your talents and abilities and shows your dedication to your chosen path. Some majors also require their students to do an internship, which can look great on your CV. As Azura mentioned before, um, there are a number of institutions, example, Health Business School, which is one of our uh, school applied partner universities. They offer campus rotation opportunities. What this means is uh, you will be able to travel, work, and study in three to four different countries around the world as part of the master's program. Um, when deciding on the universities, you could choose a big or a small campus. Um, in a big city or a metropolis, you will benefit from many advantages that can mean finding a job easily, whether full-time or part-time, traveling to and from there without big inconveniences, getting easy access to banks, post offices. Um, on the other hand, in smaller cities, some find it dull or not exciting, but for others, it is a relief of not having too many distractions during their studies, but everyone should choose according to their own personal likes and dislikes. Um, the second um, thing that you should consider is your budget. Uh, the cost of your studies is another factor to take into account before making your final decision. If you or your parents can afford, then it, it's not a problem. If not, there are ways to fund your studies, such as scholarships, if you have good grades, student loans, student jobs. There are also part-time study prog programs. Um, it, it does take longer to graduate, but you can study and make some money at the same time. As part of your master's in the, in the US, UK, and Canada, you are allowed to work around 20 hours per week on a part-time basis. While this can help supplement your budget, you cannot rely on it totally. In any case, in order to get a student visa, you would probably need to show an adequate amount in your account to cover fees, et cetera. So in general, you should have a budget of about nine to 15 lakhs uh, per year tuition for a master's degree abroad. 
There are also numerous institutions offering student loans, and fortunately for Indian students, Credilla, our partner in this webinar, have made it, the process even simpler, and all the information about this institution can be found on our website, schoolapply.co.in. Thank you, Ikshata, for presenting these two uh, first points on how to help you choose a university. So the third um, point that will help you choose a university is the location. So when we consider the location, um, there are three main things to keep in mind. So first of all, there will be the duration of the studies. While a postgraduate degree is one year in the UK, it tends to be two years in Canada or the US. So it is important to keep that in mind because it will also influence uh, the, the cost of your studies abroad. Secondly, uh, you would want to consider post-graduation opportunities. So while Canada, the US and Ireland offer stay back options, the UK doesn't. So you do want to keep that in mind if you do plan on staying back after studies or maybe emigrating for a longer time period. And last of all, um, think that this is going to be two years of your life in that location. So which culture or mentality is most appealing to you? Or you may already be drawn to from research you might have done or movies you might have watched. Um, I'm sure you have a particular draw towards maybe the US culture or the British culture. Okay, and then for the fourth point will be the ranking. So when looking at rankings, it is important to keep in mind the total volume. So in the US, there are 4,140 universities. In the UK, there are 130, and Canada only has 98. So when looking at the rankings, if a university is in the top 100 or 150 in the US, this is already the top 3%, which means that if you get accepted into one of these institutions, consider yourself very lucky, as this is an excellent institution. So really do keep in mind the total number of universities when you're looking at rankings, because it's very important. Secondly, will be the rankings per subject. Uh, they can differ a lot, which means while the institution might be ranked a certain ranking, the, the specific field that you might want to study might have a different ranking. So for example, Oregon State University is ranked number 135 uh, ranking of national university overall, but actually it's the 77th best engineering graduate school, and on a more specific program, for example, it's the fourth best graduate program for robotics. So it is important to keep that in mind um, based on what you'd like to study to check out the specific rankings for that field. And last of all, we definitely recommend you look at the criteria used to establish the ranking. So uh, is it the amount of money invested in research? Is it the employability statistics? Is it the successful graduation statistics? As I said earlier, when it comes to employment, it's really all about you. It's about your skills, your international experience, your internships, and how you sell yourself. This definitely has more value than the ranking of a university you may have studied at. So do keep that in mind when you're choosing universities. Okay, um, so we will be talking about five documents that are commonly required uh, by a, a graduate applicant in um, um, for a master's program. So the first one would be a transcript. This is an obvious one. Um, so all universities will require you to submit your entire academic history after high school. Um, for Indian students in particular, uh, keep in mind that it's not sufficient to provide a consolidated transcript. You do have to provide your individualized mark sheet. Um, and uh, you know, universities typically look at all years of your bachelor's degree, um, but this differs from program to program. The second thing that's important is academic tests. Um, the two most common type of tests are IELTS and TOEFL, um, which is a language test, and you have to meet a certain level of English to be able to study at that university at a graduate level. Uh, the other two type of tests are the GMAT and GRE, and those are aptitude tests designed um, for specific programs. For example, the GMAT is uh, common to North American universities for MBA programs or uh, for business-related programs. 
The next requirement there is a personal statement. Um, what a personal statement essentially is, is your chance to tell um, something about yourself that's not evident on your transcript or that's not evident through your application form and grades. So uh, this is your chance to describe to your future university why they should uh, admit you. You will be talking about your current work experience or your current studies if you're still in a bachelor program. You'll also be talking about why you want to do the particular master program and how it relates to yourself and uh, also about your future career and how this particular master's program will help you reach there. Um, a reference uh, letter is the next requirement there and uh, normally universities ask for two referees uh, or two reference letters and um, it is in your best interest to provide three if possible and what we ask our students is to provide two academic referees plus one professional if you do have relevant work experience and uh, academic referees are normally your uh, professors, instructors or uh, head of departments. Someone who can vouch uh, for your academic integrity and uh, recommend you to the program that you're applying to. The last one there is a CV. Um, now, a CV for a master's program is slightly different from uh, a CV that, that you use to apply for a job. Um, for a master's program, you're not only highlighting your work experience, but you'll also be highlighting prior, prior um, education. So uh, feel free to enlist all programs that you've done after high school, whether it's a short certificate program, um, a bachelor's degree, or a private course you've taken. Anything that's related to the program of interest, definitely list that there. If you have been involved in any research at the undergraduate level, this is highly valuable and you have to list that there because it'll definitely um, uh, put you ahead of the candidates. So these are the five documents that are required and uh, we will now be talking about entry requirements uh, to study abroad. So there are three countries that we will be talking about today, um, Canada, US and UK. So first off in Canada, there are commonly two intake dates. September and January. For a master's program in particular, September tends to be the most popular option. Um, January is, uh, is not very common in that not a lot of universities offer that and on top of that the universities that do offer a January intake do not offer that for every program. So you'll definitely have limited options for January but it is um, an option for Canada, September or January. And the next thing would be the duration. It's uh, between one, one year to about 20 months. It depends on your program. And it also depends on how many courses you take. A master's program in Canada tend to be a little flexible. There aren't a set number of courses you have to take each semester. You can go at your own pace and oftentimes if there's a thesis course involved, you can uh, finish it within two to three years. The most students uh, commonly finish between one to two years. Uh, as mentioned earlier, IELTS, TOEFL, GMAT, GRE are uh, exams that are typically required. IELTS and TOEFL is mandatorily required by all students and for a master's program you need to have a 6.5 on IELTS or an 80 uh, on the TOEFL. Do keep in mind that the uh, these English tests, both IELTS and TOEFL, are only valid for two years. So it has to be fairly recent uh, for it to be considered. Um, as mentioned earlier, GMAT and GRE is another typical um, exam that's required. Uh, the GMAT is uh, compulsory for almost all MBA programs, whereas the GRE depends uh, on the program and depends on the university as well. Um, the minimum score that you would require to uh, officially be able to apply to a university in Canada is 75% or what's called a 3.0 GPA. Um, now, while 75% is what's uh, required to allow you to apply, it does not qualify you to uh, get an offer of admission. 
Um, there are about 97 universities in Canada, which is not a lot compared to U.S., which has about 4,000 institutions. As a result, the master's program in Canada are extremely competitive with limited seats, and uh, it's not common for master's program in Canada to have only 50 seats each year. Um, so the competitive GPA to have for a master's program in Canada is close to about 85 to 90 percent. A uh, great advantage, advantage of studying in Canada is that the um, cost of living as well as the tuition is slightly lower uh, compared to the U.S. So if you're looking for a North American experience, Canada might be a great choice. Um, the tuition amount comes up to about 9 lakh rupees per year and the cost of living is about 6 lakh rupees. Uh, deadlines in Canada tend to be significantly earlier than US and UK. Uh, your deadline for most master's program if you are interested in the September intake or the fall intake is uh, oftentimes around February of that year. Um, and uh, for those of you who are thinking of starting in January 2018, which is the next intake date for Canada, um, your deadline would be coming up within the next 30 days or so. So sometime in June would be your deadline. Okay, and so for the United States, um, so a bit like the can, a bit like Canada, there are two intakes, September and January. So the most common one again would be the September one. That's when uh, a lot of first year students start and some programs only accept a September intake as well so it is good to do research on that before you apply just to make sure that you're in time with um, the application dates. Uh, for the duration of master's programs generally they are two years uh, long so do keep that in mind with the fees uh, it will be a bit more than other countries where master's degrees might be a bit shorter. In terms of entry exams, so for English they do require the IELTS or TOEFL, so for an IELTS you would need a minimum of a 6.5 and for the TOEFL it would be 80. So uh, if you don't reach these standards, you can generally go for academic English classes before, so that is an option if you haven't quite met those standards. Uh, you can definitely go for one or two semesters of English before enrolling in your master's degree. It's a sort of pathway program which ensures that you do reach their minimum English requirements before you pursue your studies. For the GMAT and GRE, they are def definitely uh, required for programs in business and in engineering generally. Uh, we do have some partner universities at School Apply which offer great programs and don't necessarily require the GMAT. So again, if you don't have those tests, they might make you do a pathway, which means that you'll just do a few extra classes at the beginning, which are credit bearing and lead you straight into your master's degree. So that is an option if you're applying a bit late and think that you don't have time to do one of those tests. Uh, we still have some options for you. So just reach out to us and we'll see what we can find for you. In terms of GPA, uh, it would be a 75%. If you don't reach those standards, uh, you, US universities tends to be a little bit more flexible than in Canada, so they will take into account your personal statement and maybe uh, your work experience and anything that you have that you think can sell, your, sell yourself and sell your profile will help if you don't quite meet those requirements. And in terms of fees, uh, so it's a bit more expensive than Canada, so for tuition it's about 15 lakhs rupees and for living 6 lakhs rupees, so that's per year. Uh, so for a two-year degree you'd need to multiply that by two. And in terms of application deadlines, so for the fall intake it's generally about April 1st, uh, but universities tend to be a little bit more flexible again than Canada and some accept until about June. So uh, yeah, a rule to keep in mind is generally you'd want to apply for about four or five months before the intake of the, that you're aiming for. So in terms of the um, UK um, intakes and duration, etc., um, the intakes generally start in September. Um, uh, during the year, there are no January intakes, and and the duration for the course is uh, normally one year. Um, so you'd have a nine months uh, taught program, and then three months to do your dissertation. So if you are looking for um, a good option that is it is generally cheaper because it is just one year, uh, the UK would be a great option for you. Um, the in terms of entry exams, uh, they accept the IELTS for you. UK VI, so you need to specifically choose the UK VI IELTS, not just the general or academic one. 
um, there's a specific one for the UK and you generally need to score about 6.5 on that. Um, the minimum GPA required for a master's in the UK is about 75%. Um, some universities tend to be more lenient on that. You could get away with, with less than that. So um, it just depends, uh, like Azura said, on your personal statement and your work experience. Um, for to for the fees, um, so li like I said, it is one year, it's a one year program, so you wouldn't need to multiply um, it by two for that for two years. Uh, the tuition generally is about ten lakhs, and and living is about seven. So even though it is um, slightly more expensive than than Canada, it is. Um, if you take into account you're just studying there for one year and maybe even less, just nine months because you could go home and do your dissertation for those three months, it is it is a good option um, if you're looking to save some money on that. Um, in terms of application deadlines, there are no strict deadlines. However, for the good universities, uh, we, we always recommend applying uh, before January in the preceding year, um, but most universities should accept uh, before June in that year. So, so you should give your about four to five months before intake um, for the UK.